Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now, generative AI is changing the whole tech landscape almost on a weekly basis. And here on this channel, I've shown you how you can run a chat GPT-like AI chatbot on your own local computer. And I've shown you how to do that using the Llama.cpp project and using LM Studio. You can do it on Windows, you can do it on Mac, you can do it on Linux. But here's the amazing thing. Did you know you can also do it on a Raspberry Pi? The humble Raspberry Pi is able to run generative AI. So in this video, I'm gonna take you step by step. So even if you're not too familiar with the command line, you should be able to do this because I give you all the commands step by step on how you can get a chat GPT like uh, chat bot running on your Raspberry Pi. No cloud servers, no big GPUs, all just running on your Raspberry Pi. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. So first of all, you are going to need a Raspberry Pi 4 with 8 gigs of RAM. It could be possible on one with 4 gigs of RAM, but I'm doing this on one with an 8 gigs of RAM. And you need to make sure you've got enough storage space. So either you used a bigger SD card, let's say 128 gigabyte one, or you've got some kind of storage plugged into one of the USB ports, and you're going to use that because a lot of the files we're downloading are 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 gigabytes uh, in size. So you need the memory and you need the storage. Okay, let's head straight over to the command line. Okay, so here we are on the command line on my Raspberry Pi. This one has eight gigabytes of RAM, as I was saying earlier. Now we're gonna need to install some software. So the first thing to do before you do that is to make sure that all the repository information is up to date. You do that with sudo apt update. That will then go ahead and download all of the latest uh, repository information so that you can go ahead and uh, install. Now the first thing you need to do is make sure you've got a C compiler installed uh, and so what you need to do is say sudo apt install git because you need git g plus plus and build essential and that will basically make sure that all the stuff you need for compiling software in c c plus plus using git make and all that kind of stuff will be installed now once you've done that you need to get hold of the source code for the llama.cpp project. So this is a project that allows you to run these large language models only using the CPU, which is of course great for a Raspberry Pi. Now you do that by using the git command, so git clone, and then here is the address. Now all of these instructions, including the ones we just did a moment ago, will be available in a document in my GitHub repository, and I'll leave a link to it in the description below so you can cut and paste these things easily. So basically, there's this project here and you're going to get a copy of the source code which will be downloaded onto the Raspberry Pi here. This should happen fairly quick, which it has done. And now you've now got a directory called llama.cpp. So we want to change directory into that direct into there. And then we want to build the software. So you do make and you can use minus J, which kind of speeds up a little bit. So this will take uh, uh, a few moments uh, and we'll come back once it's finished building. Now, once the software is built, you're gonna need a large language model to actually use against this software. Now, there are, of course, quite a few of them knocking about today, and the ones that are producing the most interest are these ones based on Llama, and that's a large language model that comes from uh, Meta, in other words, that's Facebook, and there are different versions of it, some with 7 billion connections, 13 billion connections, 34 billion connections. Now, obviously, we're running on a Raspberry Pi here, and we're running with limited IO and limited memory and limited CPU power. So we're gonna pick a small one, the seven uh, billion one. Now, if you go to this uh, guy here on uh, the Hugging Face page, again, links are in that document, you can see here he's got 1,151 models available that we could pick from. Many of them are based on uh, Llama, Llama 2, Llama Instruct, Llama Code, uh, but you have to pick the model that you find the most interesting. And when you click on a model, you actually get to see what it, what its heritage is, where it's come from, why, why does it exist. So, for example, this one is the standard Llama 2 7 billion connection version, uh, and it's in the right format for the Llama.cpp 
uh, project. So what you need to do, you need to download this. Now when you click on files and versions over here, you'll get lots and lots of versions. Now, this is all the same model, but they've been quantized. Now quantized takes the model information and tries to represent it in less data. So rather than it being in, let's say, floating point 16 bit floating point, it tries to reduce it down to, let's say eight bits or four bits. Uh, and that I, and actually with, a, with neural network models, that actually isn't as bad as it might sound. If you were only measuring, you know, uh, the amount of money in your bank account like that way, that might be quite frightening. But it, these models, this actually works quite well. And there are different methods for doing this. And that's what all this stuff is here. And basically you can see the difference in file size. So look, this one is uh, seven gigs and this one is 2.83 gigs. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna download the Q2 version because it's the smallest one. You may have some success with the K uh, Q4 KS versions, but these ones run quite well on a Raspberry. The bigger you go, the slower it's gonna be, the more complex it's going to be. So you need this link here. So what we do is you need to just right hand click on here and say copy link uh, address, which is what we're gonna do. And then we're gonna use that again over on the command line. So back here on the command line, you need to go into a directory called models. That's what's going to store the models. And then you need to do a W get. That's a way of fetching uh, data over the internet. And then I've cut and paste in that uh, URL and it will start to download it. And because it's two gigabytes, that will take a while. But let's just, we'll wait for that to finish. Okay, so now that's uh, downloaded, we can see here is that model there, Llama, 7 billion connections, but it's the Q2 uh, K version. Okay, now what we want to do is test that. So what you do is go up a directory back to the llama.cpp directory. And the reason is because this is where there is a, a program called main, and that is a file that we're going to have to run now. That is the, the main executable. And so what you do to test this is we can cut and paste in here a command line that will give it a test. And so what we do is we say main, that's what we want to run, minus M the model. Well, it's model slash uh, that one there. And then really all you want to do is there's this kind of quick way of testing it. And that is where we say minus P for prompt. Building a website can be done in 10 simple steps. Step one. And then these parameters here are ways that you can make the model do certain things. Minus N talks about how many tokens it should remember. But if you just run that with a built-in prompt, it will start running and actually answer that question as if that's what you typed into, you know, like, like chat GPT or, or LM Studio, as I showed you in my previous video. If you just start typing this in, it will start. Now, of course, this is a Raspberry Pi. We're not expecting it to go blazingly fast. It does take a little while here at the beginning while it loads all that data into memory and starts to access it so it can run the, uh, the, the model. But then once it starts running it, it will start producing the tokens like you would expect. Okay, so after a bit of a delay for all that to load up, you can now see it's producing the uh, tokens, which are the answer to this question. Define your website's purpose and target audience. And it's not producing them lightningly fast, but as I said, you're running this on a Raspberry Pi, which is just absolutely amazing. And for me, it gives me kind of the hope that when this technology gets more and more refined, as we get to understand it more and more, then I think we are gonna see the ability to run these things on relatively modest hardware. And that will be quite interesting for the consumer market uh, for when we can see what, what we can get uh, built into, you know, fridges, you know, let's just, you know, talk about it at that level. It could be quite interesting to see what this can happen. Now, if you let this run, we're on to step two already. It will just go ahead and it will produce probably six or seven steps. It won't actually produce 10 in this particular case. Okay, so we'll interrupt that now and we'll look at how we can make it more like the chat GPT experience with the interactive one where you can kind of, you know, write back and forth. And so there's another command that we can run here. Again, this is all in the document that allows us to actually uh, make it into interactive mode that the eye here is what turns interactive mode. These are other various settings that kind of turn it more into that chatty uh, way and make sure it, it talks to us well. So we can just run that model now. And again, it does take a little while to load up. And here we go. I've now got that uh, prompt. So I could ask it a question like, uh, what is the best time to visit London? Question mark. So I'm kind of asking, you know, just that kind of chatty question and uh, it will go ahead and start producing tokens, giving me the answer. The best time to visit London depends on your prefer preferences. 
and priorities. Notice how this is what GPT is, this is a token. So notice the word, it doesn't say priorities is one word, it was actually two tokens. Uh, so it's interesting to watch. So don't think it's just producing words when you're dealing with a, G, uh, a GPT. It's dealing with tokens, which can be syllables or infractions or symbols of words. So London has a mild oceanic climate, uh, comma, that was a token. So it, and so we can see here. We can just let it go through uh, the, uh, the 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 general uh, interactiveness here, and it's not that fast because we're running on a Raspberry Pi. However, if you want to try this out, if you've only got a Raspberry Pi, if you want to see what you can achieve on a relatively low end piece of hardware, look at this. Absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, if we could have thought a couple of years ago that we could have software that could answer questions directly like this, um, and on a Raspberry Pi and give us sensible answers. Well, I don't know if I would have believed you, but here we are. We are in the era of generative AI, music, images, text, and it runs even on low-end hardware, and it's only going to get better. Okay, there it is. So the humble Raspberry Pi can run the Llama 2 model, and you can get the same answers out of it as if you would out of a much bigger computer course it does take a little longer but great for playing with great for experimenting do let me know in the comments below uh, if you've had any success running this on a raspberry pi okay that's it my name is gary sims this is gary explains i really hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do give it a thumbs up don't forget if you like these kind of videos it's good to subscribe to the channel after this you'll see all of my handles for social media where you can follow me okay that's it i'll see you in the next one